Hey guys, I'm here with your Bible reading. We're going to begin when we left off yesterday with Romans chapter 10, verse 14, reading through chapter 11, verse 12. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. But not all the Israelites accepted the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message. Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message And the message is heard through the word about Christ. But I ask, did they not hear? Of course they did. Their voice has gone out into all the earth. Their words to the end of the world. Again I ask, did Israel not understand? First Moses says, I will make you envious by those who are not a nation. I will make you angry by a nation that has no understanding. And Isaiah boldly says, I was found by those who did not seek me. I revealed myself to those who did not ask for me. But concerning Israel, he says, All day long I have held out my hands to a disobedient and obstinate people. The Remnant of Israel I ask then, Did God reject his people? By no means. I am an Israelite myself, a descendant of Abraham from the tribe of Benjamin. God will not reject his people whom he foreknew. Don't you know what scripture says in the passage about Elijah? How he appealed to God against Israel? Lord, they have killed your prophets and torn down your altars. I am the only one left, and they are trying to kill me. And what was God's answer to him? I have reserved for myself 7,000 who have not bowed the knee to Baal. So too, at the present time, there is a remnant chosen by grace. And if by grace, then it cannot be based on works. If it were grace, would no longer be grace. What then? What the people of Israel sought so earnestly, they did not obtain. The elect among them did, but the others were hardened, as it is written. God gave them a spirit of stupor, eyes that could not see and ears that could not hear to this very day. And David says, May their table become a snare and a trap a stumbling block, and a retribution for them. May their eyes be darkened so they cannot see, and their backs be bent forever. Again I ask, did they stumble so as to fall behind recovery? Not at all. Rather, because of their transgression, salvation has come to the Gentiles to make Israel envious but in their transgression means riches for the world, and their loss means riches for the Gentiles. How much greater riches with their full inclusion bring? And that's where we'll stop with the Romans for today. Now we're going to read Psalm 1, which has about 13 verses, I believe. For the director of music, a psalm of David. The king rejoices in your strength, Lord. How great is his joy in the victories you give. You have granted him his heart's desire and have not withheld the request of his lips. You came to greet him with rich blessings and placed a crown of pure gold on his head. He asked you for life and you gave it to him length of days, forever and ever. Through the victories you gave, his glory is great. 
You have bestowed on him splendor and majesty. Surely you have granted him unending blessings and made him glad with the joy of your presence. For the king trusts in the Lord. Through the unfailing love of the Most High, he will not be shaken. Your hand will lay hold on all your enemies. Your right hand will seize your foes. When you appear for battle, you will burn them as in the burning furnace. The Lord will swallow them up in his wrath, and his fire will consume them. You would destroy their descendants from the earth, their posterity from mankind. Though they plot evil against you and devise wicked schemes, they cannot succeed. You will make them turn their backs when you aim at them with drawn bow. Be exalted in your strength, Lord. We will sing and praise your might. And that was Psalm 21, a psalm of David. And lastly, for our Bible reading today, we're going to read three Proverbs. And it's Proverbs um, chapter 20, verses 4, 5, and 6. Proverbs 20, verse 4 says, Sluggards do not plow in season, so at harvest time they look but find nothing. Proverbs 20, verse 5 says, The purposes of a person's heart are deep waters, but one who has insight draws them out. And lastly, Proverbs 20, verse 6 says, Many claim to have unfailing love, but a faithful person who can find Okay, guys, that was our Bible reading for today. I hope it touched your guys' hearts. I hope you guys are having a great start to your week. Let's bring those souls to Jesus, and God willing, I'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Bye, guys. God bless.